Hey guys, welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. All right, today I just want to go over with you guys my game plan um, as far as getting a K series, 800 plus horsepower K series in this car. It's absolutely filthy. That's okay. Um, we've had some crazy weather lately and I've been working, so the car had to be outside. Anyways, so you're going to see in this video, uh, I'm going to pull uh, the K series apart that. I started pulling apart in the last video, but I was talking to Boosted Boy Emilio today and I kind of came to a, not a harsh realization, but a reality hit me a little bit. Um, so with that built motor, I was just gonna throw piston rods in it, valve train, and see as much power as we can make. After talking to these Honda guys, 700 plus horsepower is really not gonna happen with the stock sleeves. So with that being said, if my goal is to get up there, which it is, um, I'm not looking to have a thousand horsepower car, but seven, 800 horsepower, I would really, that's kind of my goal with this. Um, and with that being said, it's that motor's not going to survive. So what's the point of going through all that and not being able to achieve that goal and just end up with a blown motor and a bunch of, you know, aftermarket expensive forge stuff that is ruined. Um, doesn't make much sense to me. So with that being said, uh, he recommended uh, going to CSS and do a closed deck system on this block. Um, we had to punch out the pistons anyways, five millimeters. So, I mean, the reality of it is it had to go to a machine shop anyways. And after calling around machine shops, I mean, I'm looking at like a six to 10 week wait. I mean, everybody's low on labor and just piled up with work and it's just crazy. So the, the reality of me getting this done in two months with 800 horsepower car is probably not gonna happen because I probably won't see the built motor until then. So here's my thought. We have this other motor here. Now this one seemed to have a bunch of miles on it. I pulled it out of the junkyard. All I did was pull the valve cover off and pull the plugs turn the thing over to make sure it, it turns over and everything's smooth. And that's about that. So I think my plan is uh, we get all of our parts together. We get this stock K series in the car while this one's being built. And that will give us all the time to fabricate. That will give us all the uh, time to get the wiring squared away, any bugs worked out. And at the end of the day, we can just run it at a 500 horsepower setup, stock internals, this thing blows up, who cares, it was 400 bucks. And what, uh, we'll just wait on our hot rod motor. So that's kind of, I think my goal, that will, not, that will keep us not delayed. So I think that will be our plan for now is we'll keep this stock, get 500 horsepower out of this, get our whole turbo system polished, beautiful, and then this motor, uh, I'm just covering it from dust and stuff. When this comes back from the machine shop, then we will pull that motor out and turn that sucker up. Okay, so with all that being said, I think that's gonna be our game plan right now. I'm gonna try to get this, um, uh, this motor sent out as soon as possible, just to get the ball rolling on that. This video, you're just gonna see uh, the tear down of the engine. We're gonna do a general inspection of it to make sure everything is good to go uh, before we invest any money into it. And um, yeah, check it out. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, I'm definitely open to them. I'm not an engine builder. I've built a couple motors, um, nothing crazy, but this is gonna by far be my you know, biggest build I've ever done. Um, and I'm not really familiar with the Honda K24. I'm learning as I go. So if you guys have any comments or suggestions or tips, I'm all ears because uh, the easier my life is during this process, the better. So uh, yeah, let's get this thing torn down and uh, see what we're dealing with here. Okay guys, now we got our motor set up to be worked on in a more civilized fashion. Now obviously we can spin it around and deal with the bottom end. And... All right guys, 
I bought this tool because uh, you're supposed to uh, use this to get the crank pulley off. But man, I tried and yeah, it just wasn't happening. So um, what I did was I hit it with my impact here, the old big boy Milwaukee with the big battery and uh, it still wasn't doing anything. So I just heated it up and now we're gonna give it a freaking hit. Let's see if it does anything. Look at that. Perfect. So a little heat goes a long way. Um, yeah, that sucker was really on there. I wasn't gonna film it because it's you know kind of boring, but I thought I would note that uh, I'm just gonna return this. I mean, there's no point in even having it because it's pretty much useless in this application. But yeah, that freaking zipped it right off once we got some heat on it. All right, we just zipped out the oil pan bolts. Let's get this sucker. Looks pretty clean. It's a good sign. So, uh, one of the big things on these motors is this whole oil pump assembly is kind of bogus. Uh, it's got balancing shafts and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, once you start revving this up, it starts aerating uh, and frothing up the oil, and it's no bueno. So the uh, common thing to do is replace this with a RSX Type S oil pump, windage tray, um, tensioner, etc., etc., which we are going to try to do, but parts are really hard to come by right now. I went to the dealership and everything's on, well, not everything, the pump and the windage tray are on back order, and they have no idea when they're gonna get them. So we're kind of seeing how that goes, but for now, um, I'm gonna pull this pump off, and to do that, I gotta pull this timing cover off as well. So we're just gonna, uh, like I said, we're kinda just going through a big inspection here on this motor, but right now everything's looking pretty good. I mean, there's a little, you know, crud here and there, but I think this is gonna be a good, good motor to start with. I don't see any major issues. I didn't see any, um, any crap in the pan. Uh, like I said, I cut the oil filter and there was nothing I saw in there. So I think this motor is good. I think this was a, <coughs> excuse me. I think this was a good running car before it was uh, in the accident. So I'm pretty optimistic that we're gonna be okay here. All right, let's take a first look at our timing cover here. Everything looks intact. Cool. All right guys, we are now dissecting. That's oh, really down there. So this is the oil pump I'm talking about. It's got these counterbalance jammies and all these gears and it's just not ideal for performance. Um, so we're gonna ditch this and this will give us our first glance inside the motor. Okay, so we got this uh, oil pump out, and I just want to show you guys that I'm not just willy-nilly taking stuff out. So, you know, anything from the timing chain or the timing cover in that area goes in a bag. Everything gets sorted. Engine and trans bolts, oil pan, hardware, you know, we keep everything in order. So, next step is to pull the head and get everything going on that end. So, it's coming, coming apart very easy. I mean... I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the simplest motors I've ever seen. I mean, everything is super straightforward. There's no guesswork. It's very self-explanatory. So I'm pretty stoked on this thing. Um, you know, that's probably why it's one of the best motors 
going. I mean, it's just straightforward, all business. Has some very good technology in it where it needs it, but there's nothing overly complicated that I've seen so far uh, on this little guy. And uh, it's also kind of incredible that something that is what? Let me get the tape man. From the back of the block, uh, we'll just go to the front of the crank is 18 inches long. Can produce over a thousand horsepower. I mean, <laughs> It's kind of mind blowing actually <laughs> how how wild this little guy can get so all right i'm gonna call it quits for tonight and uh i'm gonna keep wrenching on this thing and just keep taking it apart keep everything organized um, as you can see you know all the big stuff's in here uh, i am gonna have to come up with a plan for an intake manifold and all sorts of stuff like that but for now i'm just getting the thing taken apart and just making sure our core is good um, to deal with before we go any further. All right, guys, now we're just gonna pop off cams here, labeling, marking, everything as it comes off. All right, so we're just loosening up the cam. Clamps, bearing, retainers. I'm an idiot, I don't even know what these are called. So how I'm gonna do this is keep them all facing the same direction with the bolts in. So guys, I'm not a engine builder or anything like that. So if you see me do something that's like questionable or stupid, feel free to leave a comment. I'm always down for different opinions. Um, with that being said, I've tinkered with plenty of engines and I've done plenty of stuff. I mean, I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a pretty good grasp on the whole general idea of how things work here. So um, with that being said, you know, this is a totally new platform to me, especially when it's going back together. That's going to be a big, um, a big, you know, learning, uh, learning curve for me. But like I said, it's all pretty much relative. So I'm just a welder fabricator, general handyman tinkerer. So, man, a lot going on in this head. And I'll tell you that. But that seems like a reasonable way to do it to me. So now everything's still together, it's in order. I'm gonna go here and drop the cams kind of just back into place. Okay, so now we have everything just kind of back where it should be. So now we have full access to our head here and our valve springs. And um, yeah, we're just gonna check all this out and pop this head off and see what the, uh, see what the cylinders look like. Just getting them a little bit loose. Freaking sweet. It appears to be in decent shape. Little carbon buildup here and there, but I mean, overall, it's pretty, pretty good looking. So I'm happy with this. I think we got a good one here. So I think this will definitely be a good, um, a good motor to mess with. I'm going to reasonably assume these are all uh, OEM, 
but I'll, uh, I'm going to double check the measurement on the uh, bores just to make sure before I go ordering any pistons, make sure this thing wasn't punched out at one point in time, which I highly doubt. If I were to throw a number at this, I bet this motor had 160,000 miles on it. Maybe. Now we can get a real good visual on our cylinders, which look pretty good. Um, everything looked fine. You can see here, a little, little wear on our rod bearings. Um, the next big thing to check is gonna be the crank on this to make sure the crank, you can actually probably take a look at it now. Make sure there's no gouging or um, or any kind of issues with our bearing journals here. Like I said, I'm just going, trying to look for any major grooves or anything, you know, piece of metal or crap got stuck in there at one point. Um, and, uh, cause an issue but so far it looks pretty good i mean typical wear but i don't see any any heat marks or anything like that one of our bearings is in there so we're looking good so i'm keeping everything in order you know one two three uh you know which way it faces forward things like that uh, on these and uh, we're not going to be reusing these of course but at least you know we uh, we can if there's any issues we can identify them so I'm going to go through these each individually check all the bearings really go through and make sure everything is looking okay before you know we start rebuilding uh, this motor here so um, looking good so far all right guys thanks for watching the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel on the next video, we're gonna go through a box of goodies that I've collected so far for this motor. And uh, it's all hot rod aftermarket stuff that I'm pretty excited to share with you. And uh, I'm gonna show you what what uh, what the game plan is as far as the internals and bolt-ons and turbo sizes and all that good jazz. So I'll uh, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.